I was once taught that I'm a soul in a body. It's a statement that carried the weight of profound wisdom, and I allowed it to shape my perception of reality. I was but a mere visitor in this vast cosmos, a fleeting spark of consciousness housed in a vessel of flesh and bone. This belief, infused with an element of mystique, seemed to define my existential boundaries. I was constantly reminded of my transient nature and the notion that my physical existence was nothing but a temporary arrangement. My soul, the eternal part of me, was a mere tenant in this earthly body, a traveller passing through the infinite space-time continuum. And then there was the Earth, the Earth, our home, our cradle, our sanctuary in the cosmic ocean. But to my indoctrinated mind, I was separate from it. This blue sphere, with all its wonders and beauty, was presented as a foreign land, a land where I was a stranger. The mountains and the seas, the flora and fauna, the sun and the moon, they were significant, yet I was taught to see myself as separate from them. They called us sinners, all of us, sinners in need of redemption, in need of a saviour, sinners simply by virtue of our birth. They painted an image of a world steeped in sin, of people needing salvation. This concept was wrapped in layers of guilt and fear, often the inherent beauty of existence. But in the midst of this narrative, I asked myself, isn't this my home? This beautiful world that has nurtured humanity since time immemorial. The world that has witnessed the evolution of life, the rise and fall of civilizations, the blossoming of diverse cultures, and the unending pursuit of knowledge. Isn't this where I truly belong? I looked at my physical form, the form that they called a temporary housing for my soul. These hands that have the power to create and destroy, these eyes that can behold the beauty of a sunrise and the vastness of the night sky, this touch that can feel the softness of a petal and the roughness of a rock. Isn't this my form? Isn't this the form with which I interact with the world and express my existence? In the grand scheme of existence, Am I to believe that I have violated a rule simply by being by the sheer act of coming into existence? Have I committed an offence? Have I transgressed some cosmic law inscribed in the fabric of the universe? This thought troubled me, perplexed me, and made me question the very foundations of my belief system. And then I thought, who claims this right to judge? Who decides what is right and what is wrong? What is sin and what is virtue? Who defines the boundaries of morality and sets the benchmarks of righteousness? And on what authority do they stand? What divine mandate do they possess to pass judgment on a soul's journey? Are they not themselves part of the same cosmic dance, the same cycle of birth and death, the same grand tapestry of existence? I was once taught that I am a soul in a body, and I once believed I was separate from the earth, a stranger in a strange land, a sinner in need of a saviour, but isn't this my home, this beautiful world? Isn't this my form, these hands, these eyes, this touch? Am I to believe I have violated a rule just by being born? Who claims this right to judge and on what authority do you stand? The truth screams out from my cells. It is a deep-seated reality, a profound and unyielding essence that defines my being. It is not just an echo of time or existence, but a vehement proclamation of my identity. I am not just a figment of the imagination of a god, an ephemeral whisper in the cosmic arena. I am more than a fleeting thought or a passing blip, more than a mere theory or hypothesis. I am a voice in the earth, resonating with a purpose, reverberating with a will to live and thrive. My voice is not a quiet murmur lost in the vast wilderness, but a powerful roar that reverberates against the mountains and valleys of existence, echoing through the centuries and millennia, shaping the course of history. My voice is the embodiment of my spirit, a testament to my resilience, a chronicle of my journey. I am that which you deny. The disbelief you harbour, the scepticism you harbour does not diminish my existence, but amplifies it. Your is my affirmation, your doubt, my certainty. For every rejection I face, I am strengthened, emboldened, brought closer to the essence of my being. I am not a mythical creature cloaked in shadow and mystery, but a tangible reality, an undeniable truth. The earth is my home, the soil from which I sprouted, the cradle that nurtured my existence. It is the firm ground beneath my feet, the vast expanse that inspires my dreams, the playground where I experience the joy and agony of life. The earth is my sanctuary, my refuge, my cornerstone. 
It is a testament to my journey, a map of my past, a guide to my future. The stars are my destiny. They hold the promise of tomorrow, a glimpse of what lies beyond the known, a beacon guiding me across the vastness of the universe. My destiny lies not in the pages of your holy books, your prophetic visions, or your divine revelations, but in the twinkling of the distant stars, in the infinite possibilities of the cosmos. I will touch the planets through the hands of my children. Their exploration will be my their achievements, my achievements. Through them I will reach out to the universe, I will leave my indelible mark on the celestial canvas. Not through the will of your ghost, not through divine intervention or holy mandate, but through the work of human hands, the sweat of human brows, the courage of human hearts. I am a voice in the evolutionary continuum, an integral part of the grand tapestry of life. I'm not an anomaly, an aberration, a deviation, but a vital piece of the puzzle, an essential element of the cosmos. I claim the right to be alive, not as a passive observer, not as a silent witness, but as an active participant, a protagonist in the epic of existence. Without your story, Without the narratives you weave, without the myths and legends you craft, I still stand tall, proud and strong. I exist not because of your beliefs, your doctrines, your dogmas, but in spite of them. My existence is not defined by your words, but by my actions, my thoughts, my desires. For I am human, I am proud and I am.